All right, welcome back. 2024 NFL Mock Draft Simulator. This is your host, Trey Daubert. Today, we're going to be doing the Chicago Bears, and uh, this one should be fun. <laughs> this one should be fun. Uh, I guess we'll start here. First and foremost, you, the GM here is a fucking dope. I mean, it's just unbelievable that as NFL fans, we are going to get stuck with Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus coaching the fucking best quarterback we've ever seen coming out of the draft in a long, long time. I mean, just, just sucks, man. Everything a fucking about it sucks. This, this, like Eli Manning would request a trade right now. He would. And before I even begin, let me just go over one thing. I probably should have had this pulled up beforehand. Now, look, there's one thing that we really have to talk about. And that is what I said before that I, I am accountable for my actions. I just, what I don't understand is why nobody will acknowledge the fact that I've been right about this. So we're going to play the video. Then I'm going to explain myself because what should have happened is the fact that more people should be apologizing to me because this is still a bad trade. You ended up with the first pick in the draft because of this trade. But the amount of luck that it took to even get there is fucking unbelievable. And not even that, not, not even that, you're going to, you're going to see why this is a t still a terrible trade. We'll, we'll, we'll play the video first and then I'll talk through it. All right. We got to talk about this trade. I just got out of the shower. I'm a little bit late with it. Whatever. <laughs> Seeing all this reaction on Twitter though, by the way. Carolina Panthers got robbed. Carolina Panthers got robbed. How could you do this? I saw even Bill Simmons would take his opinion with a great assault. He sh he said uh, the Kings should trade Darren Fox for Westbrook. So you know, don't really listen to him. But he called he called this trade up by the Panthers the Go Bear trade. Okay. Again, maybe I'm in the minority on this, and I'm always a trade down guy. I'm always a trade down guy. The Bears got robbed. The Bears are the ones that got robbed. <laughs> Let's run through it. A, it's March. It's March. Guess what? The Carolina Panthers by April wouldn't have had a quarterback either. There was no reason to do this now. The only reason they did this now is because Ryan Poles came in his pants over DJ Moore. I'm going to pause it there because that's a fact. That's a fact. They don't, they don't make this trade. Unless they really wanted DJ Moore, because otherwise it didn't make sense. Let's just pause it there and pull up the full trade. Right, let's pull up the full trade. Um, I don't know why it's highlighted, but sure. All right, so the full trade, right? It was the 2023 first to move up from nine to one. Then it was... The 2024 first, a 2025 second, and DJ Moore. They did this trade in March because of DJ Moore. Let's pause it there. What were DJ Moore's numbers, right? What were DJ Moore's numbers? He was supposed to save Justin Fields. He was supposed to save Justin Fields. Pretty good year, right? For Moore, pretty good year. Age 26 season, eight touchdowns, 1,300 yards, had a career year. But what did it do to Justin Fields, right? What did it do to Justin Fields? Did he make the quarterback better? The answer to that is easily no. His yards per attempt went down. How's that possible? How's that possible? His yards per attempt went down, and you told me they got a game-changing wide receiver. If if DJ Moore really changed the trajectory of this offense, that number's going way up. And DJ Moore wouldn't have had nearly the numbers he would have if the Bears had even a competent second target. So we'll keep going. But that's that's even the most minor point of it all. That's it. That's the only way to describe this. Ryan Poles came in his pants over DJ Moore. And my tweets this shit. And let's talk about this. How are you guys going to give the guy that traded down in the second round to swap Roquan Smith for Chase Claypool the benefit of the doubt? That should be mentioned more often. The guy that's running the Bears, uh, he decided that it was a fucking brilliant idea to give up a second round pick for Chase Claypool and then thought it was an even more brilliant idea while he's paying nobody to give away Roquan Smith. He moved down in the second round 
ended up losing out on Joey Porter because he had to have Chase Claypool. When people tell you are, believe them. This guy has made two panic trades over wide receivers and just fucking got lucky as hell when it comes to this year. But we'll keep it going. Because this is a bad draft, and I've been over this. I think there's only maybe 10 guys total I'd take in the first round of this draft. Like 10 guys total. It's not a good draft. The Bears still have to make those picks. Not only that. Let's also pause it there. What did they do in the first round? 2023 NFL Draft recap. Let's just go with that. What did they do in the first round? What did they do in the first round? I don't want the fucking team grades. Chad Reuter, you're a piece of shit. You suck at this too. Um, A minus. Nope. 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 What did they do with these picks? Who's good with these picks? Now look. Um, Jalen Carter fell to them at pick nine. They passed on him. So don't sit here and fucking tell me that they robbed the fucking Panthers. Because if they really rob the Panthers, that pick turns into Jalen Carter. Now, Donald Wright will be a B level right tackle. Sure. That guy ain't moving the fucking needle. Carter would have moved the needle. Now, they pick Carter at nine, and then they end up with the number one pick. Go ahead and slam him. That's, you're going to tell me uh, that's your trade down? This is your wonderful trade down? Who's good here? Well, let's just go through it. Gervon Dexter's okay. We're gonna go. We're gonna walk through this. We're gonna walk through this. He had ten quarterback hits, two and a half sacks. He was fine. He was okay. What else did he do? Tyreek Stevenson. We'll pull. We'll pull. Uh, we'll pull his shit up. We'll pull his shit up. What did he do? What did he do last year? Did he do anything? He had four picks, I think. So he had an okay year. And then everything else was. What did Pickens do? What did Pickens do? What did Zach Pickens do? We know the fucking Ro- Roshan Johnson pick was a waste of time. Right? We know that. Yeah, not much. So, in reality, he got a B-level right tackle and a decent corner. That's his entire draft after moving down from the number one pick. Don't sit here and tell me this guy knows what he's doing. Like, it's unbelievable. This is your class for moving down from the number one pick. You got this big ass haul. You got this historic trade package that everyone's fucking blowing you for. That ain't the number number one. Are you kidding me? You start at the top of the draft, number one. You move down, and you're going to sit here and tell me he fucking robbed Carolina? That ain't good enough. Roshan Johnson? Tyler Scott? That ain't good enough. We'll keep it going, though. You want to tell me that's a number one overall pick draft class? No. No. Carolina might win the NFC South. That was wrong. But the NFC South, in fairness, was a total crapshoot. And, look, you can criticize me for picking Carolina to win the division. That is fine. What I want you to do is show me your tickets to where you bet the under for Carolina and show me your tickets for where you bet Tampa Bay to win the NFC South. If you have those gambling s- slips, I'll see them. Nobody did that. It's not crazy. It's a totally wide open division. Brady's gone. Bucks are in cap hell. The Saints just signed Derek Carr. I don't know how much of an upgrade it is. The Atlanta Falcons sure as fuck aren't winning the division. They better hope Carolina's bad. And that's no guarantee. And not only that, what's the gap between Christian Kirk and DJ Moore? Because that's the trade. There really isn't a gap, by the way. There, like, there really isn't. And, they got, and Jacksonville got Christian Kirk for free. You know, like he wasn't included as a first round pick. I uh, had an okay year this past year, but he's been over a thousand yards before, or was the year prior. Like, if you go to the year prior, he was over a thousand. Jacksonville had a really bad year. He only played twelve games. What's the gap? I don't know. You tell me. Like, is there really a gap? And DJ Moore had had his best year last year. DJ Moore had his best year last year. Uh, Moore's at 14 yards a catch, and Kirk's at about 13.8. And if he plays the full year, he's at about what the numbers are at DJ Moore. 
So what you're telling me is he treated DJ Moore as if he was a first round pick in this trade, which is what I've been trying to tell you. But anyway. He came in his pants over DJ Moore. He did. There's no gap. And they have to pay him now. This is the second time he's now panicked for a receiver because he doesn't have one. He's shown his cars. Dope. Now, what I really want to talk about, what should be talked about, is what CJ Stroud did last year. You passed on him in reality. You passed on a guy that just threw for over 4,000 yards, 64% as a rookie. And on a team that nobody thought would be good. Like this team is still really not that good. This is who you passed on. And if Carolina, and by the way, that none of this is hindsight bias. None of this is hindsight bias, right? If Carolina picked the guy that I thought they should pick, which is Stroud, there is irrefutable evidence that I had Stroud as the QB one. Had the Carolina Panthers picked Stroud, they don't have the first pick in the draft. I can't control that. Like, I don't know if you guys know that. I'm not in control of Carolina's draft. So you can sit here and say that I'm an asshole for all the things I said about the Chicago Bears, but the truth of the matter is, one, you passed on Stroud. You passed on him. I'm going to repeat that. You passed on him, and then the following year, traded the guy that you thought was a starter for a sixth-round pick. Forget all of that. Forget all of that. If Carolina picks him, they don't have the first pick in the draft. You're going to sit here and tell me that back in March when they made that trade, the draft's in late April, back in March when they made that trade, Holes knew for certain they were going to take Bryce Young and he was going to be bad. Nope. Don't sit here and tell me that. Because it ain't true. You want to find audio recording of that? Go ahead. Doesn't exist. So... <laughs> Not only did the Bears pass on Stroud, who I thought was the number one rated quarterback, and if you were going to take a quarterback at the top of the draft, he had to be the pick. I can't. I don't control Carolina. Now, now, let's just pull up everybody else. UB rankings, NFL draft. Let's let's pull up everybody else. Let's pull up everybody else. Um, what's PFF have? Let's see that. What's PFF have? Ooh, 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 ooh. What does what does NFL Network have? What does or yeah, NFL.com. Uh, I think that's the wrong article. Point being, point being, Trey actually had this correct. Okay, we'll do uh, Bucky Brooks. Let's do Bucky Brooks. Oh, he had Stroud. Good for him. Good for him. At least 60% of the media. At least. Yeah, we'll do uh, what's Jeremiah have. Good for Bucky Brooks. Oh, look at that. He had Daniel Jeremiah had Bryce Young as the number one player in the draft. Tyree, oh boy, he's... This fucking Jeremiah, he's just not good at his job. Ah, yikes. Yikes. Anybody that anybody that thought these two guys were going to be more impactful than Carter. Nope. Anyway. If Carolina gets Stroud, they don't pick first. Let's say Carol, let's say even Chicago has picked. I don't know. Pick seven. Let's say Carol, or let's say Chicago has picked seven. No access to a quarterback. Then what? Still a good trade? Answer it. Because there's just no fucking way anybody can sit here and tell me that it was a great idea to pass on Stroud. That Carolina would have been better if they made the right decision. You got so fucking lucky, Chicago. I don't know what you did to deserve this. I really don't. Maybe it was the the horrible years at Trubisky that the universe felt so fucking bad for you that they gifted you Caleb Williams. I don't really know. But the bottom line is more people should be apologizing to me about this. That's the fact. 
Because if that picks pick seven, it's a terrible trade. It's an awful trade, especially after you passed on Carter. Now, if you took Jalen Carter and you hammered the rest of last year's draft, who knows? Who knows? But, um, yeah, we can, uh, we'll do the Bears now. I'm, I'm done with this fucking rant. It's, it's unbelievable. By the way, before I even get into this, like, nobody can sit here and tell me this is, you had the number one pick in the draft. Number one pick in the draft, and this is your class. And you want to praise this guy? It's a fucking joke. It's a fucking joke. Okay. Uh, Bears draft picks. By the way, they picked first now again because of the Carolina thing. But otherwise, they picked nine. Okay. Let's look at the, the Bears draft picks because this team still stinks. Surely, after this mega trade down that everyone told me was so fucking brilliant, they should have picks out the ass this year. They have four picks. Don't have a second. Don't have a five, six, or seven. They don't even have their own four. They only have a four because that's Philadelphia's in the move up for Jalen Carter. So this guy that everybody seems to say is so fucking brilliant. He had the trade down of the fucking year. That's what I've been told. He had the trade down of the fucking year. He's got no picks. How's it possible? I'm waiting for you to answer the question. How is this possible? I want to know. How can someone trade down from the number one overall pick? And everybody says it was the trade of the fucking year. And he's got no picks this year. How's it possible? Like, it's unbelievable. It's truly unbelievable. By the way, by the way, the Montez sweat trade wasn't nearly as egregious as the Chase Claypool one. But God, was it dumb. Holy fuck, was it dumb. Are you kidding me? You could have got Christian Wilkins and not gave it up a, a second. Somebody would have been there that you could have bid on. You cannot give up that two for sweat. Not as a bad team with no picks. Are you fucking kidding me? Anyway, anyway, we're going to do the Bears. It's unbelievable. Like it's, it, like it's just unbelievable that people are going to sit here. We'll do the four rounds just because they don't have any five, six, or seven. Like, it's just unbelievable to me. <laughs> like, it's just unbelievable to me. By the way, before I begin, I'm going to tell you what the Bears should do. We're going to pause it. This is what the Bears should do. First is easy. You turn the card in for Caleb Williams. Understood. Now, the Draft Busters guys will find a way to fuck that up if you watch their video. I don't know how they did that. But the first pick is easy. It's what you do at pick nine. Now, what I said about uh, more teams should do the thing that I did with the Jets video, and that's Look, if you believe in your fucking team and you're picking high and you believe that you're going to rebound, you should be willing to give up your own pick and get another one. Like, kind of like what Houston did with Will Anderson. They gave up their own pick. They had Cleveland's pick, and Cleveland's pick ended up being better than their own pick. So this is the kind of scenario. Look, Bears, if you think you're going to be fucking good next year, you should be willing. And by the way, they probably won one or two extra games for this fucking ridiculous sweat trade because sweat played good for them well for them if if you're chicago god did, would it be fucking awesome if you had marvin harrison and caleb williams now you want to sit here and say that trade down worked okay this this pick nine is so important like you could sit here look if they sit here and they take an offensive lineman, nobody's going to complain, right? And maybe that's the optimal solution. I just would rather get two Hall of Famers instead of one. So if we can work the phones a little bit, we're going to try. But anyway, we're going to take a... We're not, we're not even entertaining this shit. 
as as nice it is as nice it is <laughs> it's just fairy tale lands. So we're not even gonna entertain it it's fairy tale land okay this is where we want to pause we should we want to try to get to four okay this is yeah this is where we want to be we want to try to get to four right four to nine can we can we pull it off we're gonna try this is what i think they should do by the way you have uh carolinas too does that get me anywhere i'm gonna guess not right we can at least actually we should probably i don't know probably keep carolinas too we want to try to get up to four I think we can do it. What about our one? I still don't think they'll take it. Okay. Will you take our two as well? Okay, we're up. We can resume. Can't. Sorry. There you go. Maybe maybe Arizona would have taken Joe Ald anyway. I don't know. Either way, we got him. We got Harrison. We have Carolina's two for next year. And um, we got two Hall of Famers. Now, I would really like my fourth round pick back for Keenan Allen. That would be great. Fortunately, I don't think I can do that. So whatever we can do here in terms of, you know, pick 75, we'll see who's on the board. If I can pick up another pick, we'll do it. Maybe I could have gotten away with a, a first and a three. I don't know. I don't regret it. Nice. Yes, because that'll give us a fourth rounder. Can I add any of this shit? Cool. Cool. So this time I have no offer. And so I pick again at 122 and then that 127 that I got in the trade. Don't have an offer. Look, I'm just going to take the big motherfucker sweat because I just love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. If he's going to be available at the late third round, I'm going to take him every time. And if we look at our... Don't need that anymore. If we look at our depth chart, do I need some offensive linemen? Absolutely. But... See, they gave up a pick for fucking Ryan Bates. Like, you're telling me I couldn't have found a fucking center with that draft pick. It's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable the way this fucking guy operates. And it, it's it's more unbelievable that he was able to keep his job. Fucking crazy. Anyway, he'll go right in here at the nose tackle spot. We were already really good at stopping the run, by the way, last year. That was one of the best things they did. Just saying, just saying, just saying, just saying. We'll turn the card in there, and then we have two fourth rounders. Right? We'll see who's on the board.
135 still in this round. 135 is the last pick in that round. Actually, you can leave that on. I'm willing to do it. If it's that. Uh, who would I pick? I don't know. Probably Kyrie Jackson, a corner. Actually, I probably... So I have him as my slot. I have DJ Moore. Dude, if I get Brennan Rice, that would be kind of cool, actually. But we need offensive linemen really bad. We got two picks. Like, if you're willing to do this, how about, how about, how about just the six? How about just the six? How about just the sixth rounder next year? Fuck yeah. And they took Kyrie Jackson, which would have been, which would have been a uh, serious consideration. Okay. Well, now that that's off the board. Let's get, let's get, I, I think we go with offensive line here. I mean, there's guys I like. Bo Limmer. I'm thinking Bo Limmer. Anybody on defense? I mean, there are, there are guys. Jonah Ellis, maybe. I think we go offensive line. I think we go offensive line here. Let's get our center. Let's get our center first. That's after this round, right? Yeah, no. So we'll fuck that. All right. And then... What other picks do I have, by the way? Just a couple sevens. So if I don't, if I don't take if I don't take the offensive line guy now, I'm not going to get one. So let's take Foster, the Missouri guy. That'll give us a left tackle. He was fucking good last year. Like, does anybody realize that Missouri won 11 games last year in the SEC and they beat Ohio State in the ball game? That happened. This guy's good. I like. It. If I'm late in the draft, if it's really going to fall that way, I want Foster and or Jones in every draft. So if I can get my offensive line, we'll go ahead and do that. Am I tempted to take Brendan Rice? Absolutely. I just, if I don't take him now, I ain't going to get my hands on him. And we really got to upgrade this offensive line. If we do those two things and we have our receiver room of Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, and Marvin Harrison, get two offensive linemen, I think that's probably the way to go. There you have it. By the way, Brendan Rice was still available going into the fifth round. Could have used a couple sixth rounders from next. I picked up a couple sixth rounders, right? One or two. They already think they had two, maybe. I don't know. Could have packaged a couple to get Brendan Rice if I wanted to in the fifth round. So, yeah, that's our draft. I actually like it. Now, we lost our first and second rounder next year, but we have Carolinas too. If you're telling me that's what it costs to get Marvin Harrison, I'm willing to do it. And especially considering the fact that this team fucked themselves making the sweat trade, they probably won two games that they didn't need to. And they probably could have gotten their hands on him anyway. Let me know. Let me know. I just want to make it super and blatantly obvious, super and blatantly clear that if you're a person defending this fucking asshole, Ryan Poles, on the trade back that he had last year, you're uneducated. 
it is what it is, man. Like that was so fucking insane that they got the first overall pick. Insane. If they pick Stroud, maybe they end up with pick seven. Could you imagine if they end up with pick seven? No quarterback stuck with Fields. Got to pay Fields. Good luck. Good luck. He he uh, got so fucking lucky with this shit, man. Even like even if they had pick two, you know, take Jane Daniels, and then you passed on Stroud. You sure that was a good idea? Like if they had any other pick, pick three, you know, take JJ McCarthy, passed on Stroud. You gotta tell me that was a good decision. The only way that fucking even remotely worked out. Unbelievable. Anyway, feel free to comment. That's your Bears one.